Hello and good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining our 2023 business planning workshop. Uh, a few housekeeping items before we get going. I can see quite a few of us uh, logging in, getting audio going. Uh, number one, we are muted for the duration of the call. Uh, you do have a Q&A box. I encourage you, if you do have some questions, to put them in there, and we'll have a few opportunities throughout the call to get those answered. You also have a chat box. That That's something that you can use to chat amongst yourselves and show some excitement and, and those kinds of things. So uh, with that said, I'd like to uh, introduce our Executive Vice President of Retail, Mr. John Bianchi. Thanks, Carl, and welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining today. Uh, we're really excited to host this uh, event and this webinar here at Loan Depot. Um, I can tell you uh, this year has been a year for the record books. Uh, I've been in this business a little over 30 years, and I, I can't remember, you know, we, we've had some volatile years in the last 30 years, but I, I can't remember a year that had this much volatility from an interest rate perspective so fast. And I know it's had an effect on uh, the real estate market. Uh, you combine that with what's been going on with supply chain and with builders and the delays. And so I, I reached out to a, a good friend of mine and I said, uh, you know, it'd be great if you could come on and talk to our sales team as well as our business partners about what they should be doing in a year like this. And then, you know, how do we plan for next year, right? And so, you know, part of this is is talking about that and also talking about building your business plan for next year. And so, uh, you know, I, I call him friend. I've known him for 30 years. Uh, you would probably call him the number one real estate, you know, coach and educator in the industry uh, on the planet is what I used to, I was, what I like to say, uh, Tom Ferry. Tom, welcome. Hey, thank you, John. And thank you, everybody at Loan Depot. Um, so I... I have a challenge. I've got 35 minutes to cover what typically I would do in about 90 minutes. So I'm going to give you all a heads up in advance. I'm going to give you access to um, team. We need to make sure that Timmy knows. I want him to all have the entire business plan and the goal setting workshop. And John, we can send these documents over to you guys as well. Um, and I'm going to give them a whole bunch of lead generation on a QR code for those that want it. Um, but with that said, uh, I just want to say to everybody, you know, obviously happy Thanksgiving week. Uh, it is an exciting time to be in real estate. Like John mentioned, this feels a little more like 1991, 1992 than it certainly does. All of us are paying attention to the data. It's nowhere near 2007 or eight, right? But there's no doubt there's a lot of volatility in the marketplace. There's a lot of confusion in the marketplace. So I am going to give you some slides around some data points, but I want to just remind everybody, um, I'm in Newport Beach right now. I'm sure I'll see Iron Mike and his daughter. They play tennis just about every day uh, over the Newport Beach Tennis Club. And I love his great line. Like, everybody's got a great plan until you get punched in the mouth. And, you know, John, look at what's happened to companies like Better, right? Like, what are they down to three employees now? I mean, there's, there's <laughs> yeah. a lot of real estate agents that are friends of mine that thought they were better than they actually were. And now the adjustment that that's the market has created some of them have struggled to make the transition. Others, it felt a little bit more like the beginning of the pandemic when, you know, load the cannon, take care of your family and go out and be a predator really made a lot of sense. And everyone that did that did really well, no matter where you were in the country. Um, but there's no doubt when you look at the data, right? Here's, you know, just from uh, my buddy, Mike Del Prete. And by the way, all of you will get access to all these slides. I'm going to show you a lot of slides. You're going to get access to this. I look back and say, wow, so, you know, this year was better than 2012 for a lot of reasons, certainly better than 13, better than 14. And, you know, yeah, 15, we sold a few more houses. But if you go back to the average sales price in 2015 versus the average sales price today, you would realize how spectacular it actually is right now, even with rates now at 6.6 .6 and, you know, all kinds of buy downs and all kinds of, you know, arm products that we make available, right? There's lots of ways to make this thing a little bit easier, but consider this. When I look back and say in 2019, which for a lot of people was a remarkable year in real estate, both from transaction standpoint, from uh, you know increases in average sales price, but look at John 2019 to the expected finish of this year, we're going to do less transactions, right? Less transactions but we're $25 billion in gross commission income ahead 
of where we were in 2019. So I just did a major conference in Vegas a few weeks back, the follow-up boss conference, and mainly teams, some brokerages, lots of high-producing agents. And the, the, the question when I asked was, hey, how many of you are flat or behind on transactions? You know, probably 70% of the audience raised their hand and said, yeah, I'm a little behind. I said, how many of you are flat or ahead on gross commission income? And about 90% of the hands went up. So they've sold less, but they made more. Now, I don't think that's our plan for 2023, but let's talk about what else is going on. Right now, the estimated number of transactions, individual units closed per NAR and you know, NAR is pretty accurate when it comes to this stuff. It looks like 4.4 million transactions is the expectation for this year. We know uh, obviously 26% now cash buyers. Isn't it amazing to think, look at that one on the left, that only 24% of all the homes that sold, sold above list price. I know we were used to 119% of all homes selling above list price. It feels like, again, John, 1992, 1993, 1994, 1995, where you know, we actually have things like days on market and servicing your listings really mattered and proper education of your buyers, negotiations, all that kind of stuff that, that we sort of forgot about during the pandemic is all back. Um, but let's keep going, you ready? I look back at again, say, hey, what's gonna happen for next year? Well, look at, look at what NAR is predicting. Now, I, I do believe that NAR um, can be a little Pollyanna at times on their predictions. I look at Ivy Zellman, I look at John Burns. Um, I pay attention a lot, as I'm sure you do too. But, you know, hard for me even to read that. But you can see they're basically saying, hey, look, this year, average sales price is going to go up or average median is going to improve by 10%. They're expecting next year, right, to be a little bit less. Transaction count, right? We're 15% off this year. I think it's actually closer to 20, right? And they're saying maybe another 5% less transactions. Here's the message. As I mentioned to, uh, to John and the team before we jumped on here, I just finished 37 sessions. Not all my personal clients, but let's just call it 37 of the biggest teams in the country. A lot of luxury brokers, you know, from Oklahoma and Katy, Texas to New York City to Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, to my client, Nick, who's down in Cabo San Lucas, who has the number one transaction business in real estate in all of the Baja. Every single one of them, I walked them through a process and I want to do the same thing with you. I just got to do it a little faster and then give you access to everything so you can go deeper. Here's the first thing you got to get. We're in a market now where you're either a predator or you're food. I used to say during the, the pandemic, lions versus sheep. This is an environment where the apex predator is dominating. The person that I, I would describe it oftentimes like this, like I would say to one of my clients, if you're a lion or a lioness, what is the only thing you care about every single morning when you wake up? And they all say the same thing, take care of my family. I'm like, bingo. So what does the lioness do? Does she check the weather? Does she ask herself, how does she feel? You know, does she check the interest rates or does she just go out and do what she has to do to eat, to take care of her kids? We all know the answer. And I'm asking you to just consider that in this environment, predators are going to dominate, right? The apex predator listing agent, buyer agent, who says, I know the market's going to do what the market's going to do. And it doesn't matter how many homes are sold nationally. The only thing that matters for me is how many appointments I book and how effective I am at working with buyers and sellers in this market. That to me is the ideal predator, right? That mindset. We can't be prey. We can't be sitting back and waiting and hoping that somebody that somebody is going to help me in this market. No one's going to help you. It's all on you. Now, with that said, I love this quote. And obviously, Elon Musk has been in the, the news a bunch. And I, I've been talking about this quote for the last 10 years. Elon has always said, your income's in direct, direct correlation to the difficulty of the problem that you solve, the difficulty of the problem that you solve. And you could argue right now, there's a lot of problems in the market, inflation, interest rates, lack of affordable housing, lots of negative news, lots of headwinds coming our way. And yet we're still going to sell 4.43 million homes, two sides, right? Call it, what is that? Uh, you know, 8.8 .8 million transactions that can be done by all of you, right? There's a market inside of every market. Now, with that said, I always ask people like, who are you modeling? Is it people like Andy C, who's you know a great client of mine? It was actually my Wednesday morning session at 1030 tomorrow, um, helping him set his goals. So Andy did 600 open houses this year, or is it 
DJ and Lindsay, if anybody's from Jacksonville, Florida, I'll actually be with them next week doing a seminar with them. They'll, you know, they're going to do a little less transactions, right, than they did last year, right? We think we'll figure somewhere around 2,200 transactions, but 2,200 transactions is a lot of business, right? Edna Kimball, who is just a listing queen from Oklahoma, had one goal this year. I'm going to go on 200 listing appointments for the year. Now, that may sound like a crazy number for you, and I understand that. She's been a client for a while. She's been doing this for a long time. It's the focus. It's the simplicity and the focus that these men and women have, right? John, you know my client, Tim Smith, who I'll be with this afternoon. Timmy's having another bang up year. These numbers are, by the way, from August. He just double ended a $42 million deal 30 days ago, right? And everyone says, wait a minute, there's no more business in the high end. He just double ended a $42 million deal that was on the market, right? 40, $45 million sales price. Deals are being done for people that are predators, for people that are doing the work. Now, with that said, here's Alicia. Alicia's simple. She just went from doing it all by herself to getting an assistant and two buyer's agents. That was it. So she could, you know, conceivably this year finish at, you know, 125 transactions, 118 transactions, but it was finally getting leverage for her. Who are you modeling? John, your old clients, Maxine and Marty Gallons, right? Who I was just at Maxine's wedding two weeks ago. She's 84 years old, finally married her boyfriend of 38 years. They are the queens of now doing video, of doing social. Email marketing is probably their sweet spot. And of course, making phone calls every single day to their past clients and sphere to check in and see how they're doing. Success leaves clues, my friends. Kenan Maurer, who's just like one of my all-time faves now, young guy, 23 years in the... Uh, 23 years old, three years in the business. And you know what? He's got three coffee shops. He's married. He's one of six. He's the youngest in his family. Decided not to go to college. Classically trained piano player who said, you know what? If you just give me some plays that I, I can work, then I can go be successful in this business. My, my point to you is this is a market of predators. And I know that word can sometimes be you know weird for people. I'm not referring to that. I'm talking about, you know what I'm saying. It is the very best day. It doesn't matter what's going on in the market. I am going to take care of my family regardless. And if you're single and you have a puppy, you're going to take care of your puppy. You with me on this? That's who's winning right now. It is this mindset of it doesn't matter what's going on. Deals are going to get done. And I'm going to show you some, some data in a minute and some lead sources in a minute that you just do the work. You're going to win. So we know success leaves clues. So John, we want to talk a little planning. So let, let's do... The best planning strategy on the planet, I call it the ultimate success formula. It starts basically with this. You have to know exactly what you want. So if I was the genie in the lamp, right? The old genie in the lamp, bing, and I popped out and said, I will grant you any three end results you want in your business. What are the three things you would write down? If I said to you, you can accomplish three outcomes, three results, three goals, what would you write down? And I would remind you, hopefully as you're writing a few of these down right now, that people that are vague get punished. I did a workshop last week in Long Island in this very cool theater. And I asked a young woman, I'm like, so what do you want? She says, well, I just want to make a little more money than I made last year. So I grabbed my wallet, John, and I took a dollar out and said, here you go. You achieved your goal. I asked another person, what do you want? Well, you know, like I, I'd like to just, you know, get a few more listings. I'm like, how do I give you a few more listings? And if you all remember uh, about six years ago, Geico, right? The insurance company did a little ad where the guy in the garage found the lamp and the genie said, I will grant you one wish. What would you like? And he was like, oh, uh, I want a million bucks. And the genie went bling. And he had a million deer with antlers all over the place. He was unclear. He got punished. I'm challenging you to really answer what are the three most important results I'm committed to achieve in my business in 2023. And it's hard to argue against those three right there. If I was your coach, if you were working with one of my 237 coaches around the world, they would all say, how many appointments am I going to get you to go on with buyers and sellers? That's number one. Don't ask how that's the easy part. Marketing is easy. Deciding I'm going to go on 100, 200, 300 appointments, whatever your 50, whatever the number is, right? Uh, John, just talking to my client, Paul Rushforth, number one team in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. He has a goal of 1,200 appointments for the year for his small team of 13 agents. When they do that, we will close 700 transactions for the year and do $8.2 million in GCI. 
We all know this, my friends, whoever has the most appointments wins, period. So that should be one of our main focuses. Number two, everybody wants to have today the most positive, called upon, recognizable brand in the market. Now, there's a couple of things there. Positive, like you want to have a positive association called upon. So it's one thing that everybody knows you, but if no one ever calls you, who cares, right? Recognizable, there she is. That's Bridget. Oh my goodness, right? I want to go work with her. We want to have that. And then of course, you're going to set a goal around volume, GCI, and I hope profit after taxes. I would make the argument, if you don't have those three simple goals up in visual, written on your wall, on your bathroom mirror, so anybody could walk by at any time of the day and say, I see what you're committed to. If you don't have something like that, and it's only up here, you're not being a predator. You're not being a lioness. You're not going to take care of your family. Now, with that said, number two is you got to know why it matters to you. So your motive for action is everything. Now, I could spend hours here, but I would just tell you to do two assignments. So write this down in your notes because there's no slide. The first one is we all know we will do more to avoid pain than we will to gain pleasure. So we want to play both. So we want to write out five painful painful consequences for not taking action, for not achieving our goals, right? What are the painful consequences I'm going to experience? And then what are the five most pleasurable things that will happen when I achieve my goals? And I got that little combination of pain and pleasure. And inside of that, you're going to find one that you're like, oh, that really stings. Okay, I'm going to go do the work. I'm just looking to try and get your goals and your behaviors to align with a little pain pleasure. But the second thing is, write this in your notes, we will always do more for others than we will for ourselves. We will always do more for others than we will for ourselves. Every, every mom, every dad, anyone with kids knows what I'm talking about. We will do unlimited amounts of things for our kids, even when they're being absolute knuckleheads, right? I have a client who bought her mother a house. She set a goal and said, Tom, I have enough. My life is satisfied. I've got a great, healthy family. I've got a wonderful relationship, but my mother has always kind of had a hard way. And if I could buy her a house and have her live near us and pay for it cash, that would be awesome. That was the year that Nancy Pants went from like selling eight or nine homes a year to like 42 homes a year because she had the drive to go do it. So you get clear on what you want. Then we got to get clear on why you want it. Like what's going to be your motive for action? So you don't wake up in the morning going, uh, but instead you're like, hey, I know what I want and I'm going after it every single day. Lions got to go kill. Let's go. Number three and this is where, why I asked John for a little more time is we got to convert all this into some form of a plan. Now, I can't write your plan for you. That would not be fair. What I am going to tell you is a big part of your plan is you've got to become the obvious choice. And when you look down the potato chip aisle, it's pretty hard to determine which real estate agent is the best one I should go with. Which one should I choose? We know today, and you won't see a slide on this, but you want to jot it down. We know today that 74% of consumers, 74% of consumers are making their decision based upon your brand, the identity that you put out in the marketplace, your brand, right? The digitization, if you will, of your personality, what you like, what you don't like, what you're all about. And we also know that now, 81% of consumers make a decision after watching videos. 81% of consumers make their decision after watching a video. So I'm not going to say to you, hey, you might want to create more content and do more videos. That at this point should be obvious. Now, what I will say to you, and again, John, remember, you guys will get a copy of the slides. I'm going to give them a QR code. They can download all this stuff, including marketing plans for all this. There's basically seven things when someone comes to me and says, I want to become more recognizable. I'm not like one of your clients who's on million dollar listing or, you know, buying Beverly Hills or all these other shows. Like it's easy for them. I say, here's the seven things that we need to operationalize to have a recognizable brand in your marketplace, to be the market of one. You might want to jot that down. You want to be the market of one. You want to be the only person they think about. Well, the first thing, of course, is take care of your past clients and sphere, obviously, right? Direct mail is killing it right now. I'm going to show you two pieces that will get every one of you listings. Um, creating consistent video, of course, but it's not just video. It's also video and putting ad dollars behind it so you can get more reach, have more people 
that can get to know, like, and trust you because they saw your content, right? Very important today. Number four, hundreds of mega open houses, right? Mega open houses different from just open houses where I'm putting out 20, 30 signs. I'm inviting all the neighbors to come in and see the property before I release it to the general public. You can go to my YouTube channel. There's like 10 videos on that, but you've got to do way more open houses, right? My client, Stephanie Younger in LA did 400 open houses already this year, 400 open houses. People are like, does it work? I don't know. She has like 11% market share with an average sales price of 2 million of about, I don't know, 10,000 houses. She's killing it. Radio, podcast, TV, billboards, absolutely working right now and costing less because of what's happening with the economy. Of course, the digital coverage, Google Display, pay-per-click, Google logo service said, YouTube, Realtor, Zillow, Mellow Homes, Home Site, all that advertising, all of that works. All of that works. And of course, the local be seen everywhere, advertising at schools, charities, right? The point is simply this, my friends. Most agents, you get lost in the aisle. How do I select you? You do all this stuff, you're going to win. And then everyone says to me, but Tom, there's going to be less transactions. I'm like, yes. And there's going to be less agents doing the right things. This is the time to be a predator. This is the time to take market share. This is the time to do more and become the market of one. Now, with that said, three very important mega trends happening right now. The first one is obviously, even though the millennial numbers are down on buy, they're also selling their first house. I'd rather us be more focused on selling in the first house. The second trend is when you look at the data, and we'll go through it in a second, boomers control the vast majority of not just equity, but homes in the US. Have you done a search query in your MLS? Have you done a search query in your MLS to determine how many people are 65 to 75, 65 to 85, which gets into the matures that live in a two story house? that have no mortgage on their property, that don't care if interest rates are six. They have enough equity in their home. They can buy and move from you know New England down to Southern New England, AKA Florida or wherever they like. There is a massive opportunity happening right now and a, gro a groundswell of listings from a demographic strategy, a demographic marketing strategy just around boomers. And then we all know with 133 million homes in America, 39% of them have no mortgage. Do you have that targeted list? Have you gone and looked at whether your MLS, whether it's Remind or another data mining solution where you can literally say, wow, look, there's 963 properties within a five mile circle radius of me that have no mortgage. I might want to market to them as well. And then here's the demographic arm of boomers that live in my area that have two story homes because once they hit 75, I'm not saying everybody, but you know, my mother in law, after 75, she didn't go upstairs for about five or six years. No one did. So having a single story home, an easier lifestyle, a condo versus a backyard, all of these are enormous opportunities we need to be paying attention to. I mean, you look at the demographics, it should be pretty obvious. The biggest demographic right now in the US are the millennials. They're 22 to 42. And what are they doing between 22 and 42? Careering, coupling, having kids, buying a home, tragically in some cases, getting a divorce, which means three transactions for all real estate agents that are paying attention. All this movement is happening every single day. Now, do I have to remind you of the five Ds? When people say to me, oh my God, are, is real estate going to happen? I remember, John, when rates got to like 7.2 and I actually posted on my Instagram uh, page, I said, don't be shocked when rates go to nine. Now, I wasn't wishing that, but I'm like, don't be shocked. People are like, if that happens, no one will ever buy and sell again. I'm like, yeah, I used to live in Newport Beach, California. The divorce rate was 72% in my town, 72%. Someone's going to sell. Somebody's going to have a baby. Tragically, someone, sorry, someone's going to die next year. Someone's going to get a divorce. Someone's going to get asked to be married. And someone's going to graduate. All these things happen every day, my friends. And they will always drive consistently at least 4 million transactions a year all the time, all the time, all the time. Now, with that said, you might want to take a snapshot of this, though you're going to get a copy of the slides. These, not in order of importance, but these are what is absolutely dominating right now amongst our 15,000 clients. 
So of course, past clients and sphere, of course, social content and running some ads behind it to generate more interest, more likes, more leads, more DMs of people saying, hey, we're thinking about buying or selling, right? Geographic farming on the top right corner, niche farming, aka boomers with no mortgage, demographic farming, agent agent referrals, Google pay-per-click is killing. John, I'll be in Jacksonville next week with my client DJ and Lindsay. Right now, between he and about 17 other people I'm working with, their very ambitious goals for next year is to list 1,200 homes a year. What if I told you all right now, running Google ads on curious about the value of your home, currently we're converting one, it's actually 1.25 out of 100. So 1.25 listings out of 100 leads and the average cost for a lead is about 13 bucks. So that means their CAC for a listing, their cost to acquire a listing from Google is $1,300. Plus they get the other 99 other people that didn't list. And these numbers right now are still at about, ready guys, 10 weeks. Not even the typical not you know 90 day lag or 180 day lag that we would typically see. There is so much opportunity for the predator mindset agent today. The key for you is the clarity around what are the three most important goals. And again, I'm gonna make the argument. Appointments, what is that number, right? building the recognizable brand that people call on, right? Critical. And then your transactions, your gross commission and your profit after taxes. The how is the easy part. Deciding what you want and committing to it is the game. Now, there's no doubt that inside of your plan, you want to be thinking about these three different drivers. What can I do to generate more referrals? How can I get a more recognizable brand? And then like we're talking about with Google or with geographic farming or even open houses, how can I do more demand generation, which is I spend a dollar and I make five. I spend a dollar and I make eight. That's demand gen, right? Google works, Zillow works. It all works, my friends, if you're willing to do the work. But what you don't want to be in an environment like this where transactions are compressing, right? What you want to be thinking is I need to go a little wider and then deeper, a little wider and deeper with referrals and building my brand and doing more demand gen. That's the focus people have right now. Now I put this up just as a reminder. I just hung up with one of my clients, Robert. He's in um, Colorado Springs. I'm, I know I'm going to say that wrong. He's in a ski resort town in Colorado and basically said to me, Hey, last year I made a million eight. This year I'm already at a million five. And he's like, and I, I think I can get to, you know, maybe, a million six, if all the closings happen, yada, yada, yada. And I said, Robert, what is the most important thing that's driving your business? He said, Tom, five, five, four, two. The first five is talk to five people every day that know, like, and trust you. Five people every day that know, like, and trust you. And it's pretty easy right now. Hey, with all the craziness happening in the market, what's on your mind? How can I help? Oh my God, I heard the whole world without, right? People are freaking out. Be the voice of reason. Make sure you're in communication with people that already know you, like you, and trust you. The other five is you got to talk to five new people every day. If I don't see that in your plan and you've got a goal to go on 100 appointments or 50 appointments or whatever that number is, you're going to get a bunch from your database, should be about half, and the balance should be coming from new sources. Five new conversations every day. Four is four lead follow-up conversations every day. John, I got to send you this report. Um, all my clients that are doing a lot of digital advertising, here's what we've basically seen. Uh, if you're going to close a transaction, right? 35% of them, you'll close in the first 90 days from the time that they clicked on a realtor.com ad or whatever it may be, it's 35%. The balance is all done after 90 days up to about four years. So whoever does the most follow-up, nurturing, long game relationship building with these customers, that's who makes the real money. 65% in the follow-up. So four every day, and then two videos, two videos every day. Five past clients, right? Five of your sphere, like that group, five new people, four lead follow-up, and two videos every day. Now, please don't hit that QR code. I'm going to give you a copy of this. This direct mail piece and that direct mail piece, right? Pretty simple, guys. Every one of you could do this. I, I would argue, I don't think I would do it in December. I think I do it in January just because of the barrage of like direct mail that happens in the month of December. 
but I would schedule this one to go out maybe the second week in January and this one to go out the fourth week in January to 6,000, 8,000, 5,000, 4,000, whatever the number is of the farming communities you want to go after. And what happens is instead of just saying, I work at ABC Realty and I'm number one and I'm the best and I'm the sexiest and blah, blah, blah. This just says, check your home value here. And you know what they do? They go, bill, bill, trash, bill, trash, huh? Grab their phone, bink. And the second they do it, if you have the right landing page strategy, you automatically click cell phone, email, name and number. You get all that stuff. So typically, my clients would send this out to 3,000 to 12,000 homes. And at 12,000, what we're seeing is within about 90 days, they've taken on average nine listings. Now you might say, well, God, that's a lot of direct mail and that's really expensive. Well, what's your average sales price? And if you take nine listings in your marketplace and they're nice homes and they're priced correctly, they sell, what's your average commission? It's just a demand gen play. Spend a dollar, make 11 as an example. So somebody said, QR code is fuzzy on my screen. Good, I don't want you to go to his QR code because he doesn't need a real estate agent. He only does this for his listings that he's going after in his marketplace. Now, this QR code should work. So before you hit that though, up, before you hit that, let me give you guys a little heads up. So John, on this, when they hit that QR code, you're going to get access to 15 lead generation programs, like start to finish, how Stephanie Younger does 400 open houses, the scripts, the checklists, what they say before, what they say at, what they say after, you know, the, if you were to print everything on this QR code out, it would be a stack this big. Here's my advice to all of you. I'm giving this to you for free. Do not download everything. Don't. Instead, look and say, okay, hmm, Nikki did 225 transactions last year using realtor.com. I'll take a look at that. And you download that one. Or don't print it, just read it and say, does that make sense to me? Can I make those phone calls? Can I follow up that way? Can I use speed to lead and speed to quality? And you know, can I, do I have the manpower to do that, right? If the answer is yes, then maybe that's one you use. Maybe it's open houses, maybe it's database, maybe it's geo farming. There's all these lead systems there and so much more. My argument to you though, is just don't print it all out. You don't need it. Pick one or two that will actually help you get the number of appointments you want, that'll help you get the recognizable brand that you desire, that'll help you get to the transaction and GCI and profit goal. I'd rather you get one or two and go hard on those than just print them out because you're organized and you like to print stuff out and get it all you know organized on your desk. That, that's not what we want to do. So it's all there. Second thing, second thing, you're going to see a button that's going to pop up. It's going to say, hey, do you want to know more about Tom Ferry coaching? Do not click that unless you know you're a predator unless you want a competitive advantage, right? Oh, thank you. My team even put this up. You can call my office and say, hey, I want that. That's actually even better. Sometime today, just call and say, I want to know more. Actually ask them for a bananas offer and see what they come up with. But what you don't want to do is click it all and say, oh, sure, I'm interested in this and interested in that, and then not do anything with it. I want you to write down the last thing before I turn it over, John, and I'm being mindful of time because I think I'm right at the time I told you. I have three primary focuses for all my clients next year. You should write this down as a friend. Number one is to simplify. Some of us have complicated this business beyond belief. We've over-engineered it. You've got three CRMs. You don't use any of them. You bought every piece of software. You don't use any of it. We need to simplify, simplify. That's why I say no more than three goals. One, two, three, too many, right? How many appointments can I get? Which means I should have a wall board over here that says I'm committed to going out hundred appointments and you track and measure that. Simple. You with me? Build a recognizable brand. I'm going to do more of this. Simple, not complicated. The second one is quality. When you, when you look at what consumers expect and what drives them insane, like the, the wonderful case study that we all read, which was 25% of consumers that bought a house during the pandemic essentially said, I hated the experience. It wasn't a quality experience. And by the way, 80% of people that were surveyed that bought a house during the pandemic, listen to this guys, 80% said, you know what? I compromised on my home purchase. 
So I didn't get in the school district I wanted. I didn't get the number of bedrooms of baths. I didn't get the backyard I wanted. I didn't get the garage I wanted. I didn't get the street I wanted. But it was such a frantic panic to get a, you know, to get a house during that time that 80% of them compromised. And my argument is what people want now more than ever is a quality experience. So first one is simplify. Second one is quality. Third one is speed. In an environment like this, the last thing you can do is go, well, I got all these open loops and I haven't decided yet and I'm not sure. And I'm gonna to talk to seven more people and a month goes by and two months go by. In this environment, make a decision and move forward. Make a decision and move forward. Okay, I'm gonna do demographic farming. Great, make a decision and move forward. Hey, I did it for four months, I got zero results. Make another decision and move forward. Hey, I did it and it really worked and I got three listings from it and I'm having all these great conversations, great. I'm going to expand on it, make another decision and move forward. What we can't do in this environment is be that lamb, be that prey that's just unwilling to act, right? We need in this industry right now, leaders that will step up and say, I don't care how many homes are sold nationally. I care about taking care of my past clients, my sphere and going on enough appointments because that is what we need right now. You do that, my friend. And this year, this next year will be bananas for you. Most of the people I'm talking to are all saying, I'm going to do 20 to 30% more business next year than I did this year, because this is the market, this is the playing field, and it's go time. Does that make sense? All right. So with that said, right, hit that QR code. If you're interested, call my office. Let's have a conversation. If you're not, I wish you and your family a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. And John, I know I went a little over on time, but I turn it back to you and I appreciate hey, 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 our friendship. It's okay, Tom. I, I, I don't know what's better, drinking coffee or listening to you, but uh, they both get me jacked up and you were on fire today, my friend. Uh, Thank you. Lots of great stuff. And, and I know it's overwhelming. You know, a lot of agents that might, you know, be listening in for the first time being exposed to you, you know, they yes. hear 400 open houses. They're like, let me just like try to like, how is that possible? That would be more than one a day, right? I have to be in two places at one time. You know, right. it's like, it's, it's overwhelming. But I, I, you know, listen, I've worked with a lot of Tom's clients over the year. Yes. And I can tell you the yep. ones who do the things that he says are highly successful. So it's straight up, right? And, right? and you know, it's funny, Tom, it's not for a year or two years. It's for 25, 30 years straight. Bingo. As long as we've known each other, right? 26 uh, yeah. years. Yeah, it's funny because I, I go back and I look at the stats and I look at all the agents I worked with over the years that were number two, three, four, five, and they're still the top agents. Right. Right. Greg, Greg Noonan and Maxine are still number one and number two in San Diego. Right. But only for, but only for 20 plus years. Wow. Right? Well, well, thank you. Thank you for sharing, you know, yes. with the QR code, all the other things that uh, our business, business plan, is. goal setting. And then John, I'll send you guys the slides and you guys can forward. Okay. Or if you guys call my office, I'll just send you the slides. I'll send them to you guys. Cause there was probably another, as I mentioned, 60 slides of things I can go through, but you know, we only had 35 minutes and I've already eaten up way too much of your time. <laughs> all right. Thanks. So, hey, have happy happy Thanksgiving, everybody. God bless. Sure. See you God all bless. soon. Take care. So, uh, Jeff, I don't know how long I've known you for, but a long time as well. I, I remember some meetings and, and actually, you know, driving around in the car with you and Tom and, uh, yep. and so, um, you know, now we got another great treat for you, right? You know, someone who has been highly successful in this business for over 30 years, coaching, training, you know, the, the top producing agents in the country, yeah. uh, as well as, you know, being a, you know, a co-owner broker of a Cobalt Banker office that's yep. successful as well. So Jeff, I don't want to take any more of your time. I'm going to give it yep. to you to, to walk people through business planning for 2023. Thank you. Hey, John, I really appreciate this opportunity. There's nothing like following Tom Ferry, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to fill in some of the details that he went through because he is amazing. Just like Tom, I've got so many slides to share with everybody. Probably will not get through them all, but I'll make sure everybody has those. So today, you know, we're talking about business planning. You know, the idea is I want you to dream. Like Tom just said right there, I truly think also that next year is going to be even better than this year. And here's why. Number one, look, the market changed mid-year, okay? Next year, moving forward, we're going to have an opportunity. We're going to know what we're in for. We're going to know how to adjust around your markets right now. 
And the idea too is there will be some agents that will be getting out of the business, but I know this is in a changing market. The market won't change that much. You're going to be able to get more pieces of the pie at the end of the day. You're going to have more opportunities out there. So I want to start off with a couple things. Number one, write down your word for 2023. What's the, what's the main focus for 2023? And if you could put that in the chat, what, what is your focus? What's the word? What's the overarching theme of next year? Discipline. Discipline. I love this, Chris. Engage. Money. Game-changing growth. Look at this. This is inspiring growth, motivation, Vanessa. Success, support, build, focus. I love this. Oh, my God. I'm getting fired up just looking at all the uh, late execute. I love this. Good stuff. Predator, right? Having a book of business, being consistent. That's the key in real estate is being consistent, right? Make more money, win. I love that. Good stuff out there. So we know we start with what's the word. And then here's what I want you to think about. Again, I think we're, we've we either shared the business plan, the Tom Ferry business plan, or if you scan that code that Tom just mentioned, you'll be able to get that as well. But to me, like Tom had mentioned a few minutes ago is, Keep it simple, all right? Let's start super simple. Hopefully you've got some areas you can take some notes and there's a lot of things behind me and we're gonna go through this real quick, okay? Because I want you to think about this is the best of the best, keep it simple. As crazy as this is, I'm going through a business plan. I've actually got a, a client named Carolyn Young. She's in Northern Virginia. And in the past four years, John, we've taken her from 400,000 to four million in four years. And her business plan is just as simple as this. So we're going to go through what the best of the best are doing to think about what they're going to do next year. Okay. So let's start this way. We got the word for the year. Make sure you got that down there, but think about this right in the middle. I want you to write down your unit goal. How many deals do you see yourself doing next year? Okay. Think about where you want to be next year and then relate that to how much you want to make What's that look like? How many units? What's that GCI look like? And then what's your volume goal? I think we should start with the volume units and GCI. That's where we start. Okay. Start there. And then the next thing is those unit goals. We know are what percentage are going to be listings and what percentage is going to be buyers, seller side, buyer side. So I want you to write down, I'm going to just go through an example. We'll say, Let's say my goal is 36 next year. If I want to do 36 deals next year, uh, I'm just making up some numbers. Let's say uh, that'll give me $500,000 in GCI. So the idea is how many units do you want to do? And what, what percentage of your business comes from sellers to buyers? If you could put that in the chat as well, what does that look like? Do you have, do you have 75% of your business coming from buyers or maybe even 100% from buyers? Well, what does that look like in your business plan? Maybe it's 50-50. Greg says 60-40. I love it. Seller side to buyer side. 60-40. 90% sellers, Christopher, and 10% 10 buyers. I love that. 90-10. Okay? So then work it backwards. Let's say uh, 12% or let's say 25% of my business comes from sellers. And let's say 24, 24 deals are going to come from my buyers. So super easy so far, right? We don't even need a calculator for this. 36 deals, 12 are going to come from sellers, 24 are going to come from buyers. I'm just using this as an example, okay? 90, 10, way to go. That's awesome, okay? The focus is, you know, hey, you know this, you got a list to last. So make sure the majority of our clients are at least doing 50, 50 sellers to buyers, okay? Because we know too that those sellers turn into what? those sellers turn into buyers as well. Half of all sellers turn into buyers. So let's start with where do we see ourselves? And let's break this down. On the listing side, now I'm going to work it backwards a little bit. Okay, I'm a buyer's agent. I love that. Perfect. Okay. So if I've got a goal of 12 sales in 2023 from the seller side, now let's convert that to how many listings do you think you're going to take? Okay. In your market, we know, you know, real estate is hyper-local. Maybe in your market, if you take 12 listings, 12 are going to sell. Maybe it's, maybe it's 18. Maybe it's 24. But what is that number? What is that number? How many listings do you think you're going to take? Because we know one thing. Maybe not every listing is going to sell. Or maybe listings are going to take a little bit longer. So start with that goal. 
of if I want to get 12 listings sold, how many listings do you think I'm going to take? Okay, I'm going to use in this example, I'm going to put in uh, 18 listings taken. Okay, everybody with me so far? Now we're going to convert that to how many listing appointments? LA, we've got listing appointments, listings taken, listings sold. So how many listing appointments do you think you need to go on to take 18 listings? Okay. If you're really good, I have agents all the time say, oh, I could do, you know, 18, one in one. Every one, every one of the listings I go on, I list them. But what does that look like? 50, I love it, Luis, 50-50. So half of all the listings, appointments you go on, you're going to take the listings. I love that number. I'm going to use 36, half of that. So if I go on 36 appointments in a year, again, keeping it super simple, that's the whole, whole idea 36 listing appointments will lead to 18 listings taken. Okay, everybody still with me so far? And then here's the idea. is You may not see this down here, but the idea is breaking it down to a monthly goal. If that's 12 months, that's three listing appointments a month. That's pretty easy, right? Break it down to the simplistic. The focus should be what, what does that look like on a weekly basis? What does that look like on a monthly basis? Okay, breaking it down. The best of the best do things consistently. I call them like lunch pail agents. What I mean is they, they bring their lunch to work. They, they do their job. They get in there. They make their phone calls. They focus on setting appointments. And what we found, the best of the best focus on the appointments that they want to set. They have, a, they have a long range goal, but they also are focused on the short term. Okay. Is this, there's a name for this formula. Here's what I found is if you're a high converter, it's usually about 25% that you're not going to get. So in this case, it's about 75, 25. If you're a newer agent, it may be reverse of that. It may, you may have to go on 25. You may only get 25% of the listings that you go on. If you're, if you're an experienced agent or been in the business three to five years, it just depends on the conversions around that. But it's usually either one to one or 25 to 75, depending on how experienced you are. Great. Good stuff. All right. Let's go. I love it. All right. So then here's the idea. What is that goal for you? What is that goal for you? Tell me what that goal is on, on the, on the seller side. What does that look like for you on a monthly basis? If you can put that in the chat, that'd be awesome as well. What's that looking like? Let me get some feedback out there. Three. I love it. Luis, three. Who else? 13. I love it. Six. Maria, 11, Dawn, oh, wow, 11, Dawn. John, we got some top agents here today. I love it. Yeah, we do. We really do. Renee, five, good stuff. Three, two. Now think about that. Whatever your goal is, it just starts with the basics of what's my focus today. Again, I'm going to go through some of my slides, but I'm a big fan of thinking this, one appointment a day. One appointment a day. If you wake up, John, every day with the mindset of what have I got to do today to get either a buyer appointment or a listing appointment, that's the focus on your business. If you really think about it, back in the day, John, I used to hire new agents. I'd say, all right, come on into my office and here's the deal. As soon as you set an appointment, you can leave. You can take the day off. They come in nine o'clock, super fired up, and they get on the phones. And I'd be like, you may make one call and set an appointment. Hey, that's a home run for the day. But here's the deal. Hey, John, if you don't set an appointment, you can't leave the office till five o'clock and have that image in your mind. And what would happen? People would get an appointment. Focus on the appointments. Appointments, we know conversations lead to appointments. And that's the, that's the main goal out there. And here's another thing that we know. We know, here's what happens. I think we need to over-index on the amount of appointments that we go on. Because why? Some people may flake on us. Some people may not show up. Some people may not be ready to move right now. So the idea is over-index. Imagine if you get five appointments a day, that's 20 in a month, that's 240 in a year, you will have more business than you can handle, okay? Now, some of you may say, whoa, that's a lot, okay? 
I, I've actually got clients, John, if you can believe this, that go on 20 to 30 listing appointments a month. Is that a lot? It's a lot, okay? And the, I, most people are like, how do they do that? They focus on the appointments. They focus on their goals and what they really want. So we're, we've got the, we got the buyer side. We got the seller side. Now here's the other idea. <laughs> I love it, Luis. All right, here's the other side. Well, well, let me break this down. Here's another, here's the key question. What are three things? What are three commitments that you can make sure that you do on a consistent basis moving forward next year on a, on a daily or weekly basis? to make sure that you get to that goal of 12 listing appointments. What does that look like? What are, what are we call it our pillars? What are three pillars you're going to focus on? You can put that in the chat. I'd love to see that as well. Pick up the phone and prospect, right, Christopher? I love that. What else can we do? Look at your goal. What are three things you can focus on to make sure, ensure that you absolutely reach that goal? What does that look like? Conversations, face-to-face, follow-up with past clients. I love this. Sunny, follow-up. What else we got? Follow-up. It's all in the follow Call more than once. Have a plan, right? Show, show up. That's, that's half the battle right there, Kimberly. Direct marketing, coaching. I love it, Danica. Renee, call your SOI. What else we got out there? Door knocking. Here's the idea. We've all heard of SMART goals. They need to be, what, what are they? They need to, uh, I can't remember exactly right now, but the idea is they need to be time sensitive. They need to be numbers. So uh, we've got big pick strategic planning and follow up, but the idea is drill down a little bit further. What does that look like? Specifically measurable. There we go. Thanks, Christopher. You saved me. Specific, measurable, attainable, right? realistic, time sensitive, right? But the idea is I want to see more like I'm going to follow up five hours a week or there we go, Mark, 50 calls a day. Be more specific. Tell me, give me a number, not a story. Think about that. When it comes to the business plan, it should be things that you can check off. You could look back and say, I did 50 calls this week or this or today, whatever that looks like. I'm going to door knock three hours uh, on a weekly basis, or I'm going to do two open houses a month, whatever that looks like. Okay. So the idea is I really want you to think about what to make sure that you reach that goal. What are three things that you're going to be consistent about moving forward? Think about this. What if we gave it our all? What if we took all the advice I'm giving you here, taking all the advice that Tom gave you early? Imagine if you gave it your all for 52 weeks. What would, what would your life look like a year from now if you did all the things that we talked about here? What would, you, what would that look like? Here's what I know. Add a zero. Do me a favor. Whatever that GCI is, add a zero. Look at this. 18 contacts, role plays. I love it. How do we get expired? I love that. Check out uh, uh, Vulcan 7 or Red X for expireds. There was a question of how do you get uh, expireds. That's right, the 5542, right? That's the key. What else we got there? The other side, let's talk about the buyer side. Let's say I want to have 24 buyer sales. What does that look like for you? And then here's what I found is usually it's three to one, three to four to one. So if I'm a if I'm a, a, a an experienced agent and have a high conversion, the idea is I'm gonna let what does that come to? Three times that is uh uh 72 appointments which is basically six a month so watch this if i want to reach my goals i've got to find out the three things that i need to focus on but also i've got to focus on nine appointments a month not too bad right and four follow-ups i love it okay john thoughts ideas what do you think it's so far well you know i'm thinking as you're as you're speaking right i'm thinking of the, the finance side of everything you're saying. Right. And everything that you're talking about from a numbers perspective, measurable, setting goals every day, it's the exact same thing on our side of the business. You know, and just, I'm just looking at it going, I, I, I could be sitting here listening to a mortgage coach and it would be yeah. the exact same speech, right? 
John, I've always felt it's basically the same type of business. They, yeah. You've got to make conversations to set appointments, yeah. to take loans. It goes back. It's just a, we know it's just a numbers game, right? That's what it is. Absolutely. It's a numbers game. And Tom has always said, what? Numbers is the language of business. So the idea is, I think business plan starts with, I love it. The path is always, the path is always the math. I love that. All right. So the idea is figure out your numbers and hold yourself to those things. Okay. So John, I'm going to pull up my slides real quick. And uh, I just want to go through a few things if you wouldn't mind. I don't know if you can see me when I pull this up, but again, I've already kind of gotten ahead of myself, but business planning simplified. The idea is what we're going to do here is create a business plan. We're going to be working on a personalized business plan. I'm going to also talk about is what is working now and some scripts that the best are saying right now. And we want to have a lot of fun. We've already got a lot of engagement. This is awesome. So here's the idea. Why do we need a business plan? We know that it'll help you steer your business and can measure the growth. And really, it is not as hard as you think but I have found that 80% of agents don't even have a business plan. They're winging it. I like to say they're winging it at a high level. And lastly, there's really no wrong way to write a business plan. This is your, your, your goals, your business. This is your focus. So you can't do anything wrong, all right? And I'm sure Tom had mentioned before, without a written plan in place, you're simply rolling the dice for the future, okay? So watch this. I'm, I'm a big fan of, being positive and being over, uh, really over indexing on affirmations. I think that the big challenge I see in this industry is a lot of, there's a lot of self-doubt. There's a lot of self-sabotage. There's a lot of overthinking things. And there's definitely a whole lot of fear right now. I'm going to go through some things that I know help my clients out that they say to themselves on a daily basis and the thoughts that they have through their mind, because at the end of the day, it really is your mindset. It's really what you're thinking. So here's the idea. Affirmations, especially positive affirmations, have a powerful effect. Powerful effect. They will minimize, look at this, anxiety, stress, and defensiveness associated with objections. Because we know we get objections all the time. Okay? I've always liked to say the market is whatever you think it is. The market is in your mind. Okay? We know we can make money in a great market. We can make money in a bad market. It's whatever you think at the end of the day. So I think right now there's a little bit of negativity out there, okay? And we need to make sure that we overcome that. So listen to this. I know you probably can't hear, but everybody should say this. Say this. I believe in me. I believe in what I think. I believe in my ability. Now imagine if you say that to yourself every day, <laughs> okay? It, you're going to start to almost brainwash yourself. You're going to start to believe what you're saying out there. And I know there's probably some people like, oh, this is a little hokey. Or I found the best of the best. They have a positive mindset and they repeat things over and over to themselves. Or they at least have it part of their day firing themselves up. So I believe in me. I believe in what I think. I believe in my ability. Here's another great little phrase right there. I always ask questions. I listen carefully to their answers. I handle, I love this one. I handle objections easily and effortlessly. I ask for the appointment. I close for the sale. I get the signature. Uh, this is key. We know we're problem solvers. I'm a problem solver. When someone gives me an objection, I stay calm and focus on solving their issue. I achieve my, my goals. I love making phone calls and connecting with my clients. I love talking to new people every day. Imagine if you start saying that to yourself. Another thing, I qualify every prospect. I qualify to discover their motivation. I easily set more appointments. And lastly, a couple of things here. I can sell your home. I can get the job done. I know I can find a property for you. I rarely see agents say these things. Do you realize that most people, I think the true thing in real estate and probably in the mortgage industry as well, is it's about confidence. You've got to believe that you are the best of the best out there, okay? You've got to believe that you can sell the house for them. You've got to believe that you can find the property for them, right? Confidence separates you. Think about that. Confidence separates you from the crowd. And I know agents that when they get 
get in the habit of when someone gives you an objection, say, I'm so glad you asked me about it. I'm so glad you brought that. I'm so glad you asked me about that. Okay. Think about that. That's a way to rephrase and not be scared of what they're saying. I'm so glad you asked me about that. And then we're going to talk about that objection. Here's, you will laugh, but many of my clients say things like, that's easy. That's my job. I, that's, I do this all the time. That's easy. That's my job. I do this all the time. I just know saying that I feel a whole lot more confident. Okay, it really separates an experienced agent from a newer agent or it separates somebody that doesn't have the confidence they need out there in the, in the, in the marketplace. And lastly, I'm fearful, excuse me, I'm fearless. <laughs> I'm fearless, I'm powerful, I'm unstoppable. And last thing, don't worry, I got you. Think about that. If you start saying those things to yourself on a daily basis, you're gonna win at the end of the day. So I'm sure many of these slides may be very similar to what Tom has mentioned before, he probably started off with this when everyone has a great plan until you get what? Punched in the mouth. So what Mike Tyson said, we know that the middle of the year, uh, it kind of went a different way than we thought, but that's okay, okay? We're gonna go through some ways that you can handle this. We know all the problems that are out there right now. Buyer demand is down, economy is a little shaky. All these things we know, but what can we really control? Can we control the interest rates? No. Can we control inflation? No. Or the stock market or the gas price? No. But what we can control, we can control our actions, we can control our attitude, and we can control our approach. Okay. You can control whether you get up and go to the office. You can control your schedule. You can control whether you're going to get on the phone. You can control all these things that really lead to conversations and appointments. Think about that. Just focus on what you can really control out there. So here's the idea. How long do you plan on being in business? How long do you plan on being in the real estate business? Okay. Some of us out there, maybe we're, we're just getting started and we see ourselves in this, in this business for the next 20 or 30 years. Maybe some of us are trying to find an exit strategy. Maybe we've been in this a while. We're trying to sell our business or uh, transition out of this business. But really write down, here's a question. How long do you plan to be in this business? Okay. And then the next thing. What's your three, excuse me, what's your 10 year vision? Where do you see yourself 10 years from now? Okay, where do you see yourself 10 years from now? Okay, and here's the question Are you ready for 2023? Because we know it starts right now. 2023 starts right now. So I want to go through a little bit of the business planning that we've given you. And we've already talked about the word for 2023. But there's, there's going to be two sections. It's the first section in our business plan. And it talks about your commitment. It talks about who holds you accountable. It talks about your why. It talks about your vision. It talks about your mission. And it talks about your values. Okay. So I want to start with your commitment. Okay. I want you to write down a few things. Are you interested? Are you committed? Or are you obsessed? How focused are you on real estate right now? How committed are you to do whatever it takes to get there? When you're putting this plan together, I want you to think about this. How serious, on a, on a scale of one to 10, where are you, okay? So what is your commitment? And the next thing I think we need to look at is really who holds you accountable? On a daily basis, besides you, who holds you accountable? Who holds you to your goals? Who calls you out when you don't reach them? Is that, who is that? Do you have an accountability partner in the office? Is that your coach? Is it your broker? Is it your sales manager? Is it your family? Who do you hold, uh, who holds you accountable to these things? Because we know we let ourselves off the hook all the time. And then the next thing, and we've all heard about this, the why. What is the why? Your why should make you cry. Why are you doing this? The idea is, why are you doing this? I can remember, I, I had a couple of clients that were always like, man, you get me so fired up. Can we just talk like five minutes every day and get me, you know, when I'm about ready to make my calls, I just want to hear you in my head. I want you to get me going on. I said, look, we all know that there's these points in life where we either go left or right. We either make the calls or we don't. We either have an excuse or we don't. And I told them, I said, at that point, you've got to think about your why. Whenever you're sitting there, should I do another open house? Why am I doing this? Should I make more calls? Goes back to why are you doing this? Think about it. What is pushing you right now? 
can't really see everybody right now because I'm going through my slides, but post in there, what is your why? What is your why? What is pushing you right now? Okay. And then I think when you get a chance, go through the vision, the mission, and the values out there as well. But I think what I've found is they have, they have a big why. There's something that's pushing them. Okay. Whatever that may look like. Okay. Maybe your why is you want to buy another house. Maybe you want to buy a house. Maybe you want to pay off debt. What is pushing you right now? Okay. And then the next thing I want you to think about this. There's a lot of information in our business plan, but I want you to, let's take a little snapshot of your business right now. Okay. Where's your GCI right now? Where are you at right now? What's your average sales price? How many size, how many units, how many deals have you done so far this year? What does the volume look like? And what has been your, if I asked you, what has been your best effective lead source? What was that this year? I want you to think about maybe if you're on a team, what does it look like? Where do you want your team? Where's your team currently now? Who's on your team? How is their performance? And then we talked about what percentage of listings sold versus buyer sales, okay? Where are we right now? That's the idea. Because I know in the business plan, there is a, there's a section that we're going to look at 2022, the actuals of where we are, and then we're going to dream and we're going to plan for next year, okay? It's part B, business goal setting, all right? It's right there. So I want you to, when you, when you get this plan in front of you, spend, this is your plan. This is all about what you want. I, I, what is it? I heard it. you're halfway there to reaching your goal by just putting it down in writing, having a thought and writing it down. You're halfway there. So make sure you take advantage of all the opportunities and things that we're giving you here today. How many people have ever done a business plan before <laughs> and they were super fired up and then they never looked at it again? You know, the idea what we have found is that our best clients, they're creating their, their future to some degree. And they're going to adjust. They're going to go back to that business plan maybe every week or maybe every month or maybe every quarter. Okay. This is a kind of almost like a living, breathing, you know, uh, business that you're going to go back to on this business plan and look at. And then I want you to go back and figure out where you want to be in 2023. What are your goals around listings and buyers and break that down? I think everybody gets how to do a business plan. So take a little bit of time to fill that out. Okay. And here, I'm going to go through to really make sure that you reach your goals. You got to know exactly what you want. You got to figure out exactly what you want. You got to make a decision. Your business plan should have things in it like in 2023, I'm committed to being the most reviewed agent in my town. I'm committed to helping X number of families buy houses in 2023. What is your, what is your, what are you committed to? Put it in writing and decide. Tom said that at the very end of his talk earlier. He said, figure out what you want, decide on it, and go for it, okay? And I'm sure it, maybe I've already probably talked about this. I'm sure he said this, but life punishes the vague wisher and rewards those with a specific ask. Drill down. Get deep into your goals. Really, what do you want? So here's the idea. At the end of the day, what do you want? I want you to write that down. What do you want? What do you want in your life? What do you want in your business? I want you to think about what do you want in your business and what do you want in your life? What does that look like? What do you want? Jot down some notes. Put it in the chat. What do you want? Really, what do you want? Is it, is it an income goal? Is it, is it being number one in your office? Is it, is it having a 10% market share? Whatever that looks like, what do you want? Starts there. John, I heard a while ago that the average person spends more time in their life figuring out what they're going to wear every day than even really thinking about what they want in their life and their business and what they, they, they have no plan. They're just focusing on the, the, the things that don't really matter. So this is a time to really figure out what do you want? Here's the key. Why do you want it? Why do you want it? Okay. And then the next thing is what will you need to do to achieve it? Okay. Has anybody read the book, Think and Grow Rich? Hopefully everybody on here has read Think and Grow Rich. It's funny, I read that book at least once a year. And the main basis behind Think and Grow Rich is, again, exactly what we talked about here. What do you want? Why do you want it? What will you need to do to achieve it? 
And lastly, what will your life look like when you achieve it? What will that mean for you? If you reach your goals 52 weeks ahead, we're a year in advance from now. If you reach those goals, what will that mean for you and your life? What will it look like? That's the ultimate goal is thinking about it. And that's the best thing about real estate. We can figure out how much we want to make, figure out how many conversations, figure out exactly what we want. It's easy to put it down in writing. The hard part is to do it consistently, but you can really change your life. I don't know any other business than real estate. Again, I've been in over 30 some years. And the idea is, what do you want? It always starts every year at a business planning moment like we're at right now. Because here's the idea. Life is short. Focus on what you want. Life is super short. Focus on what you want. Okay. So another thought is, why not you? Why not now? Why not you? Why not you? Why not now? Whatever that looks like. Okay. So you've got to know your motivation. We talked about that. Three ways to create lasting motivation, create a future that's more, com more compelling than the work required. I like to say the regret is always worse than actually doing the work or doing the job, okay? We don't want to live with any regrets this year. We don't want any zeros in our numbers. Next thing is decide on meaningful goals for your future and visualize the end results until it becomes so, okay? Tom is always a big fan of write yourself, I dare you to write yourself a 20 year letter. It's October, this was, we did this a, a few weeks ago. It's October, what is it, November 20th or 23rd right now. And I'm sitting here, where are you, where are you at? Where are you living? And you're, reflect, you're reflecting on the life that you've created, a life that you created by design. What does that look like? Describe it in detail. I challenge everybody on this call to do that. It will be interesting to see where you're going with this, okay? And then there's, a, there's also a section in our business plan. You know, we're real big on creating balance in our life, and we call it the big sevens. We need to focus on your health goals. You need to focus on your relationship goals. You need to focus on your money goals. You need to focus on your contribution goals that you have. You need to focus on what you need to know, their knowledge goals. What do you need to improve on? You need to focus on having fun in your lifestyle goals. You need to focus on, focus on we call it WIG, wildly important goals, your crazy inspirational goals. So when you get a chance, there's a section in the business plan to fill out. It'll tell you where are you at right now. It's almost like a scale of one to 10. Where are you at and where do you need to work on? Great exercise right there. And then I don't know if Tom showed this before, but we had a client, Jason Ferris. Um, he made a commitment a couple years ago to book 250 appointments, okay? So he, look at this, what a great visual, <laughs> okay? He put it up on a whiteboard and just marked it down. As simple as that sounds, that's in front of you all the time. I love technology, I love iPhones, I love my iPad, I love everything. But we've got to get a little old school. Imagine if you whiteboarded this out and put this up in front of you. You can see what Jason did there. He booked 205 appointments. He had 17 of them cancel. He went on 188 of them, and he listed 143 listings. What does that tell you? It's just a numbers game. You know, guys, I remember I was in real estate in 08 through 2010, and again, we're nowhere near that type of market. But I remember we recognized, we actually did better than we did a few years before because we focused, we recognized that maybe in the past, maybe I need to make five calls a day in the past. Maybe now I need to make eight calls a day. I just, it's just, you need to do a little bit more. Think of this thought, 10% more each day. Just do a little bit more. Spend a few more minutes to make a few more phone calls. Spend a few four, four minutes of following up. Do a little bit more. But I thought this is a great visual. I don't know if Tom had showed this before. Again, you're gonna get all these slides and we gotta make sure it's a simple action plan. So I think at the very end, I noticed Tom was talking about what are three most important results you're gonna to commit to doing in 2023. Think about that. Three most important results you are committed to doing and what are the activities you need to produce to do that? We talked about the 5542, five, okay? It's 
here's what I like to do. I, I add another two to that. Focus every day on five people you know, five people you don't know, four lead follow-ups, two social media videos, and two text messages and DMs. We are getting so much connections with our clients right now, DMing people on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn. Do you realize that 92% of direct messages on Instagram get looked at and replied to? That's even higher than text messages. <laughs> okay. Think about that. Liking, liking people's posts, sharing ideas, comments is the key. Connecting with them on social media is rolling right now, is working. And we talked about who holds you accountable to this. Maybe Tom went through your highest and best use of your time. <clears throat> we need to focus on income producing activities right now. <clears throat> and what are those time sucking things that happen in our schedule that you just don't want to do? I think moving forward, we need to focus on what I call $1,000 an hour activities and not focus on the $10 an hour activities, okay? I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit because I wanna make sure that I get all everything that I'm going through here today. A normal coaching call for me is we usually go through these numbers. We talk about, we have a call every week and we talk about how many, com I want you to start tracking this. I'm gonna give you the secret. I'm gonna give you ways that we create certainty around our goals with our clients is, we're tracking the conversations. We're tracking the listing appointments, listings taken, listings sold. We're tracking the buyer appointments, the buyer sales. We're tracking the active listings they have. We're tracking the price reductions they've got. We know that moving forward, you know, we're probably going to have to manage sellers' expectations a little bit more than we have in the past. It's going to take a little bit longer. But we're also starting to track price reductions now. And then we usually start to call off, let's talk about a win. Let's talk about a victory from the past week. Let's talk about a challenge that you're facing. Let's talk about an objection that you're getting. And let's talk about your goal moving forward for the next week. And then we're going to wrap it up talking about their pending income and their pending deals. Okay. So the idea is what's a leading, ad, a leading indicator versus a lagging indicator. You know, the idea, a leading indicator is everything that I just really went through. <laughs> okay. And the lagging indicator is closings, close volume, GCI profit. Those are things that already happened in the past. So again, here's the question. I want you to answer this. Are you thinking big enough? Okay. Don't be scared. <laughs> okay. You got to be thinking bigger right now. Okay. That's the key. You're going to do better. You're going to take more market share, but the idea, are your goals big enough? Okay. Last couple things. This is a learning and doing event. Okay. I want to make sure that we make sure that we do this at least by tomorrow. I want everybody at some point to pull out their phone and text five friends, text five sphere. And the goal is we got to get back to networking and connecting with people. Okay. So I want you to text five people and set three meetings. Like you can see some examples over here. Hey, Joe, you know, it's been too long. Let's go out. You want to play golf, tennis? What, what, what do we, you know, there's people that you're like, I need to get together with them. Well, now's the time to get together with them. Now's the time to network and socialize. Hey, Kate, it's been a while. I was thinking about you today. Let's plan on getting together. Lunch next week. Or hey, guys, let's get the kids together. Dinner at our house this week. The idea is get on your phone and text some people and get out there. Don't be a secret agent out there right now. Okay, because Tom has always said, the more accountability we create, the more, act, the more we activate our greatness and the greatness in others. We need to connect with people right now. And we talked about the idea of one appointment a day, right? I love this book. I'm really rolling through these slides, but I've got, Tom gave me this book a year or two ago and it's Jeffrey Gittimer's Little Black Book of Connections. And he said on the first page of that book, all things being equal, People want to do business with their friends, right? I think we'd all agree with that, right? And then he adds, so to climb the ladder of success, <laughs> you don't need more techniques and strategies. You need more what? You need more friends. Think about that. You can't do this on your own. You need people to help you reach your goals. So we really need to 
get back to connecting and networking with people. Okay. Last couple of things I want to tell you. I'll never forget this. Tom did this a while ago. Everybody, when you get a chance, pull out your phone, slide all the way down to the very end, to that hashtag after Z. And most phones, even Androids or iPhones, will tell you how many contacts you have in your database, in your phone. Okay. I'll promise you this. This has been tried and tested over and over again. How many people are in that in your phone? If you call them four times a year, if you mail them once a month, if you email them once a month, and if you show twice a year a little bit of love to your clients, and I'm going to show you some examples when I say that around showing some love to your clients, you can get a 10% return on your database. Think about that. You've got everything you need, and it's on your phone right now. Lean into the people you know that, that obviously know you, trust you, and like you. Okay, think about that. A 10% return, and we've already got them in our phone. So if you just follow that plan right there, this whole thing is worth it right there if you follow this. There's also, I'm giving you, there's talking, switching gears up a little bit. Everybody is, hey, it's all video, video, video. We've got 30 questions you can answer in 30 seconds over the next 30 days. Here's 30 great questions you should start to shoot and post on social media. And then Tom went through, this is one of my clients, Mike Field, up in, uh, up in northern New York, okay? If anybody remembers the Super Bowl this past year, there was a little QR code that was bouncing around the screen. And Mike, the, I got to tell you, this is the best mailer I've ever seen in some 30 years of real estate. He took the idea, what if I put a QR code on this postcard? And what if I just screenshot it says, check your home value, okay? What happens when you screenshot that? Tom was mentioning this earlier. I'm going to go a little bit deeper in this. But when you, when you click on that QR code, it takes you to a landing page, okay? Prime seller leads, okay? That's the landing page. And they type in their address and it's gonna give you their home value within like really a minute or two after doing this. But he sent out, look at this. He sent out 23,000 of these by EDDM, a little bit cheaper, okay? And if you notice, this doesn't have a lot of bright, nowhere on there does it say, hey, look at me, a picture of Mike Field. If you, if you zoom in real, real lightly down there at the very bottom, it's got all the disclosures that are necessary. But look at this. He generated 10 listings and two buyer deals in two months from this QR code. If I was you, I might want to look at doing this. That's a great idea because here's one thing. They care about what their home is worth. That's why this is working. It really focuses on their home and what it's working. Here's another great marketing example. John, look at this. This is a clear, this is a clear envelope. U.S. postage approved envelope. This is one of my other clients, Mike McBurry, down around Cape Coral, Fort Myers area. And he's been sending this out the past year. And all he's done, we came up with this idea. He prints out the Zillow listing and then he highlights the Zestimate. And if you can see that, it says wrong call us today to understand why okay he has been i know that this is has gotten him at least three listings of a probably uh, he's probably known his market and price range is probably six to six and a half million dollars from this alone and then on the back side of it he's got uh just a little bit of information about his team but this is what is working right now as different and unusual as that is. look these are two marketing pieces you don't really see and then tom mentioned this a few minutes ago was 35% of people, they're going to buy it within three months. But the real, the sweet spot, the real money in this business, 65% of people end up buying after 90 days. So continue to follow up. We quit too early. Don't give up too soon. This is DJ and Lindsay that he was mentioning, and they tracked and measured everything they did in the past year. They're rolling and they know their numbers. They recognize that 65% of leads they already had and they end up buying after 90 days. Imagine if they had stopped talking to all those people. Okay, I think they're doing like 2000 deals. Okay, imagine 65% of them wouldn't have happened if they had given up after the first month or two or after the first call or two, okay? 
So back to showing some love to your clients. Right in the middle, this flower arrangement. This is from one of my clients, Lori Eastman. Lori Eastman down in Newport Beach. She, on an anniversary of when they close, she drops off every year, every year that they bought a house in that month, she drops off a flower arrangement. And just to say thank you. She says she usually gets two to three listing appointments from this idea alone. It's like a, it's like a thousand times return on investment. This costs her maybe 20 or $30, maybe 40 at the most. She usually, what happens is they call and they thank her. She just drops these off. She does, she probably does probably 10 or 12 a month. And it creates a social media post that she gets tagged in. This is a, this is a text message she got. So the idea is, what are you doing to show some love to your clients? I've got another client that's gotten so much business from playing golf with people. I've got another client that gets a case of wine and every month drops off wine to their clients, show your clients more love. Show that you care about them. Don't be the type of agent that never talks to them, and then you just start marketing them after they move in. There's, there's the information about Lori and the, the flowers there. I'm going to give you, a, uh, there's all these referral sites. You should definitely, I'll make sure it's a little bit clearer than that, but there's almost probably 30 referral sites that you should be on right now. And you know what I found? is that the average agent, they get a little scared when it comes to their past clients or sphere. Think service call, not a sales call. Think, how can I help this person? How can I come and bring value to this conversation or this connection and not trying to sell them anything, okay? And then the idea, the last idea I'll give you is set more appointments. Always get in the habit of setting the next appointment when we get together if they don't listen to you. They don't sign a listing agreement or they uh, you sit down and you do a listing appointment and they say, we're going to think about it. Set the next appointment that has always worked for me. So, John, I've got a lot. There's probably another 40 slides on that. I'm going to make sure everybody has those. It goes into a little bit more detail and there's other ideas and scripts in there. That's all I got right at the moment. Good stuff. Yeah. Amazing stuff, Jeff. Amazing. Uh, you know, it's so funny you mentioned uh, customer appreciation because last night, I went in my kitchen and there's this like long loaf of like sourdough bread. And I, I asked my wife, did you pick that up at the store? She goes, no, the, the agent that we used to sell our home, someone from her team just knocked on the door and delivered it. So, you know, it, it is, it is amazing, right? The, uh, the, that, the, you know, that customer appreciation follow-up, yeah. it goes yeah. a long ways. We're in the relationship business and you guys are in the relationship business too. Everybody. Well, yeah, listen, everything you're talking about, right? People work with, you know, who they trust, who they know and who they like. That's right. And so, um, you know, it's all the same, right? And so, uh, you listen, thank you so much for everything that uh, you and Tom delivered today. I know yeah. we'll get everything for uh, uh, all the participants that came onto the call today. We'll make sure that we'll send out a deck to everyone, the video recording, I think, and we'll have a whole bunch of stuff that, uh, you guys are giving us, Jeff, and we'll make sure that everyone receives all the content. I love what we have. Almost 500 people here today. Yeah, well, you listen, know, a lot of folks have rooms full of agents, right? So uh, I've got some pictures, right, that uh, that have been shared with me, you know, where there's a room of, you know, 20 agents, you know, uh, all commingled together with uh, with our uh, associates, you know, watching this on uh, on the TV. You know, John, here's what I truly think. I think as agents... Moving forward in the next couple of years, we're going to need to work together more than ever with our lender partners, right? Our, we're going to need to work together more as agents from the listing and buyer side. We're going to need to get together and share some information. I know y'all got so much going on at Loan Depot and things that are working out there. We just need to connect more. We need to get back to that relationship type of business, even with people in our business. Don't you agree? Absolutely. I mean, there's there's so many tools. We have some tools right now that we you know, we co-brand that we can actually show, even though rates are seven percent, right? And and listen, we think they're going to go down next year. Uh, we don't know exactly when, but I right. think we're all we're all you know poised for that move. But we have tools today that can show a home buyer why they should buy right this second versus yep. waiting. Yep. And, it, and it's, you know, when you see it on paper, it's, 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 it's overwhelming, yep. right? And we can provide agents with that data right now. So you're right. We just need to work closer together to help people find homes and sell homes.
I got to tell you, I always work with the loan officers that brought value. I know you brought a lot of value, especially with Tom. Hopefully I add a little value here today. Great stuff. We really appreciate this opportunity. And hey, guys, let's get out there. Let's do it. 2023 starts right now. Let's make sure we do our business plan and get them done. I really appreciate this, everybody. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great Thanks, rest guys. of the week and happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. See ya. Take care.